From the height of success to the depths of despair and back again, the highs and lows of Jennifer Hudson's life are as dramatic as any Hollywood movie. From the hard streets of Chicago's South Side to the Oscar red carpet to the grit and grace that helped her survive a terrible family tragedy. She sat down with me recently and shared her story in a heartfelt and emotional interview. I feel as though I've lived over four or five different lives in just 30 years. You know what I mean? Like, it's because so much has happened in my life and, and everything. Yeah, I mean, you've climbed the mountain already. Wow. I'm still climbing. <laughs> <laughs> climbing, all right, all the way to the White House. And how's Jennifer Hudson feeling? I'm feeling good. And looking? Well, you decide. Her rise has been nothing short of meteoric. From an American Idol unknown, to Grammy winner, to movie star. This 30-year-old who burst into our living rooms nearly a decade ago seems to be loving her new life as a celebrity and mother. But it didn't come easy. Tonight, in an intimate interview, Jennifer Hudson is opening up. I feel like I've seen the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows about weight loss. It's still a work in progress. Wedding plans. We set a date. And for the first time on network television, how her own music helped her cope with the most devastating family tragedy imaginable. I was really lifted up by love. In her new book, I Got This, Jennifer Hudson is sharing her life story, a story of determination in the face of personal and professional <laughs> challenges. This book is about your career, but yeah. it's also about your image. It's about mm -hmm. the struggle with weight. Well, I was much heavier growing up. I, I was, like, wearing, like, size 22s and, in, in, you know, or 24s and things like that. I got, this, yeah. I got This is more than a book title. It's her musical anthem for making it as a heavier woman from Chicago's rough-and-tumble South Side all the way to the top. That's just how I like to look at things, and instead of second-guessing myself or doubting things or even defeating myself before I even try. That's where it came from, saying, you know what, I got this. And I love the lyrics, I got this. Every single breath, another step on my road, I got this. Feel free to join in, by the way. Okay. I'm from the south side, trying to get to my goal. <laughs> I got this. Ain't no stopping me. Ain't Come no on, stopping. follow me if you feel the if need. You feel it. I got this. Yes. Somebody throws something big at you. I got this. I can I do this. this. Yeah, I always say, if God put me in this situation, then I, I must be prepared. I have no choice but to be prepared. And that's why I wrote this book. It's like, I want to be that voice and cheering others on, you know? And if I got this, you got it too. Her feisty, can-do spirit, she says, was in part instilled by her mother. Like my mother always taught us, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can, you know, you can do it. Anything is possible. Jennifer began singing in the church choir with her grandmother. She was your emotional inspiration, but that's yeah. where your talent came from, right? It is. Grandma. It is my grandmother. And everyone said that I inherited her voice and her gift. Jesus promised. But unlike her grandmother, Jennifer wanted more than the church choir. So she launched a singing career, aided by her lifelong best friend as manager, Walter Williams. He went and created those business cards, and he would put our little price on it. And so I started out charging $25 a song. What kind of places were you singing? Oh, God. I would sing for weddings. And in school, I was singing for all the programs, the graduations, the... Um, luncheons. I was singing for church programs, but I didn't charge churches because it's like, no, you know, I'm singing for God. But something was holding her back, her weight. We would keep running to the adversities of the image, and it's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. In your book, you talk about auditioning to become a backup singer to Barry Manilow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the book, you said, I nailed it. Yeah. I nailed it. <laughs> but you didn't get yeah. it. No, I did not get it. Nobody explained why. They didn't say it's because you were too heavy. No, they didn't say it, but it was there. Jennifer knew the it all too well. But American Idol presented a brand new opportunity. Jennifer, then 21, had lost a lot of weight, and her mother pushed her to audition for the popular show in 2003. I'm fit. I'm ready. This is the image you want? Okay, well, here it is. Bam, here we go. Okay, I got the talent. Now, let's go. 
It's a sad heart that won't love like I know it should. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Jennifer, see you in Hollywood. Thank you so much. I'm gonna hold you thought your talent was going to carry the day. Yeah. At that time, I think I had dropped like 60 pounds. That should have been enough, at least I thought. I got the nickname The Big Girl on American Idol. I'm like, who? The Big Me? Oh, because, wait a minute, this 12 is a size 2 <laughs> where I'm from, but not in Hollywood, no. Do you have a thick skin? I have to. True to her personality, she gave as good as she got on Idol. You look like you should be something you'd wrap a turkey in. <laughs> I told him, don't knock it until you try it out now. And I spent the round and I modeled it for him. Wardrobes aside, Jennifer and her talent were undeniable. The sun! This booming rendition of an Elton John favorite propelled her into Idol's final 12. Although Jennifer was voted off the show two weeks later, she never considered herself a loser. She credits her Idol experience with helping her beat out nearly 800 women to land her first movie role in Dreamgirls. What about what I need? But in what can only be described as a delicious irony, Jennifer was actually required to get heavier to play Effie White. Okay, so wait a minute. I've been trying to get into this industry all of this time, but couldn't because of my weight issue. But then when I get the opportunity, I'm, I need to gain more weight? Are you serious? I had to gain like 20 pounds. That couldn't have been hard. No, I just ate a bunch of chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> which I love art imitating life, her character Effie was a strong-willed lead singer, shut it to back up behind Beyonce's Hollywood hot character. You don't need me. All you care about is her bony ass. You back off. At some point, though, did it dawn on you how much Effie's life was mirroring your own life? That was something to help me bring up the emotion. And I am telling you the movie's signature song was Jennifer's Showstopper. It's a big scene. Yes. What was that like? I just remember I had a full-on audience in the room from Spike Lee to people like that. But I just, like, zoned out. Were you feeling Effie's pain when you Oh, my God. It? I was feeling it, and I just took everything, whatever was within me. Like, each tear I cried was a real tear. <laughs> As the DVD extra about the film told it, Jennifer's marathon two-day session was by design the last shoot of the film. By then, Jennifer fully embodied Effie. They wrapped the chairs, they wrapped the props, everything but me. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the last thing I have to do. She finished on a high note, but there would be dark days ahead. Coming up, a fateful call that changed her life. That one thing, I wouldn't be sitting here. And how a brother's voice gave her the strength amid heartbreak. That's what I hear in my head. Do what I know that would make them proud. <laughs>